Hi, my name is Katie and I'm the manager of academic services here at East Coast Language College. <laughs> My main role here is to ensure that we offer high quality programs and excellent student support. Another role that I have here at East Coast Language College is the academic advisor. I advise all of our current and future university and college bound students. I help with your applications, I help correspond with the universities and colleges, I help resolve any issues that you may have, and I also prepare and send all of your final reports and transcripts after you graduate. I want to talk a little bit about our University College Pathway Program, or our UCP program here at ECLC. The purpose of our courses of our UCP program is to prepare international students for future studies here at universities and colleges in Canada. We do this by guiding them to develop the language skills necessary for them to reach their academic goals. The different levels of the program simultaneously combine language skills with academic preparation. This gradually gives the skills the academic training the language skills, the critical thinking skills, and the time management skills necessary for academic success. The five levels in UCP focus on increasing students' overall abilities in reading, writing, listening, and speaking in an academic context. Within these skill areas, the students focus on specific things such as academic writing and referencing, listening to lectures and taking notes, reading and annotating, editing and proofreading, delivering presentations, speeches, and debates, doing effective research, avoiding plagiarism, and building academic vocabulary. When the students graduate from our final levels of our UCP program, they will move on and successfully achieve their goals at post-secondary institutions in Canada. Students who graduate from this program also have direct access to many degree programs at our partner university or colleges. ECLC has unique partnerships with more than 20 colleges and universities in Canada I'm going to talk about a few of the most popular colleges and universities here that our students attend in Nova Scotia, NSCC or Nova Scotia Community College. This is for our UCP 400 bridging program. The most popular programs at NSCC are the business programs, the IT programs or information technology programs, as well as the culinary arts programs. A popular university here in Halifax is Dalhousie University. Students who enroll at Dalhousie University usually take their Bachelor of Commerce or Bachelor of Management programs. The Bachelor of Computer Science, Bachelor of Engineering are also very popular. Another popular university is called NASCAD or Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. The students that enroll in NASCAD take programs such as Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Fine Arts. They also have master's programs that are very popular with our students, Masters of Design and Masters of Fine Arts. St. Mary's University is also popular with our students. Students tend to take uh, the Bachelor of Business Administration or the Bachelor of Arts programs. Another popular university is Mount St. Vincent University or MSVU. The popular programs at MSVU are Bachelor of Business Administration or Bachelor of Nutrition. Now let's go inside one of our live virtual UCP classroom. So we have one more thing to do before we leave today, and that is going to be looking at some note taking and symbols. So as we're using even the mind map, but especially when we're taking notes like the Cornell method, we do not want to write full sentences. Right? We don't want to try to write every word down that the speaker is saying. We will get lost in our listenings and lose track. A good way to keep up with what the listener or what the speaker is saying is to write in symbols and abbreviations when we can. So these are the most popular symbols, the first part of this. Okay, so we have the symbols over here and some of them you might recognize, of course, um, some are quite obvious, the at um, sign, right? Uh, however, some of them might be new to you, right? So what does et all mean? So, matching them with the definition. Okay. For homework, what I'd like you to do are number two 
and number three. So number two is getting you to abbreviate these longer words. So we're usually choosing these long words to abbreviate. It takes a long time to write these words in your notes, and sometimes you might not even be able to spell them. So how can we make this shorter and much quicker to write when we're trying to focus on that listening? So abbreviations as a kind of clue are usually around three or four letters. For these ones, you'll see these are already three or four letters. So you have to do the opposite of that. You have to kind of translate it into the full form. So what does this mean? For example, this one, does anyone know? Okay. I don't know. Uh, it's page. 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 This, this page. one's more obvious. Page. Question and answers. Question and answer. Does anyone know FYI? Some or people English speakers, or information. Actually, exactly. Some people, English speakers, say this FYI in a sentence. It's not proper to mm -hmm. do that, but you might hear it. So for your information. Kind of like a warning in a way. Um, so you can do these two for homework and we'll review them tomorrow. So we're going, I'll leave this on the screen for those of you who are having trouble with the document, but I did send it in the chat so you can download it. So hopefully you have a little bit of a head start. Let's kind of looking at, look at them together here. Any ideas what this could mean? What this one? Afternoon and evening. No, maybe we'll skip over that one. How about this one? This one should be quite easy for you there. Number. 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 We also know it now as kind of the hashtag. Right? Mm -hmm. This one? Mm -hmm. At or with? At. at. Uh -huh. What about K? Sometimes we see this, if any of you have Instagram, will have like 10K followers. That means uh, that they have 10,000 uh, followers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This looks like an equal sign. Exactly, approximately. So think of it like an equal sign, but where it's a wavy, it's kind of like the so-so. So approximately mm -hmm. equal to. This one? Less than. Less than. Mm -hmm. Lesson. Versus. 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 So two things against each other. Versus. Re. Yes. No idea. Not sure about this one. Yes, for someone. Number. Number. Let me find the exact one here. Rise is increased too. Not a rise or an increase, no. Um, Concern. Concerning with regard to. With regard to. Yes. So usually re is actually a shortened abbreviation form for regard. Right? So mm -hmm. I could send an email. We often see an email saying, I need help re um, yesterday's homework. So <laughs> meaning I need help regarding yesterday's homework. Mm -hmm. I.E. Uh, in the other words. In other words? In other words, right? So it's saying it in a different way, right? To give an example. This one? Different. Um, not the same. The same as. Different. Not the same. Not equal to. Um, this one, of course, everyone knows this one. Money. Or money, money. money. Mm -hmm. This one? Correct. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. At all. So we see this when we're looking at APA formatting in different citation guides. Mm -hmm. At, at what? all meaning? Mm -hmm. Therefore? Not therefore. Uh, at um, it means the others. And others. And others. So it actually is a Latin word and it means and the rest. And the rest. Mm -hmm. This one, we usually see it. Rises, increases. Rest. Not huh? rise and increase, no. No. Rising. Mm. Per. 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 Usually we see. Per um, per. So we usually see if we're looking at job postings, maybe they make $12 per 
hour, meaning $12 for every hour, right? Okay. That's where we see it most commonly, but you can use it for anything per, per very close to four. What about this one? First step. No. Therefore. Um, this one causes or leads to. Mm -hmm. Think about it like the direct connection, leading to. Um, think about this. We see arrows on the road. It leads to a place. So this one leading to an idea. This one? Percentage. 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 Okay, easy one here? Male. 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 This one? Rise increase. Rise increase. Sorry? Increase. 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 Hi. What's the only one that's left? Is anyone keeping oh. track? It's therefore. Therefore. Whoa. Yeah. So this oh. is a good, if you know that, it's a good little symbol that you can be using, actually. So knowing some of these, and especially the ones that you already do know, being mindful that when you hear these words, you can be writing them in your notes in this shortened way using this symbol rather than having the complete um, word in there. It makes it a lot easier. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a practice assessment. So you'll be able to practice note taking using either a mind map or Cornell method and hopefully using some of these symbols and abbreviations, although we're just starting to get into them right now. Any abbreviation or symbol that works for you that you know what it means is helpful as well. Okay, so just making sure that you do something that works for you. Uh, so before we leave today, I'm interested to know what note-taking method do you prefer? What one do you think is most useful or most helpful for you? I personally like Cornell because I'm a very organized person, even when I'm writing, and I find it really helpful to review. I actually used it as I was studying in university, so I feel like I really uh, realize the advantages that it has. I think Cornell, to me Cornell is more easier. Cornell is it's easier. Why do you think it's easier? You both said that. Because really some people think that's very overwhelming. There's three parts. A mind map is just kind of freedom. You can write anywhere. Right? So why is that better? Because you, you can take notes, general notes, and after that, after releasing something, you can organize putting the main words separately and think about the, and summarize your idea. Mm -hmm. And it's easier when you not not for not to, just for the moment that you are receiving the information but after you receive the information you when you take a look you understand very very fast i think yeah the mind map you do kind of need to read in a lot of different places when uh -huh. you're reviewing after so that's a good thing so we're looking at charts and graphs today a lot of these you've probably seen you've probably read them before but just becoming more familiar with the English names, with how to talk about these charts and describe them uh, with English phrases. So it gives us the first answer, the Venn diagram. Sometimes we see these two circles, sometimes it's three or even more. It's to show what things have in common. So where it overlaps, these things are what they have in common. The things in the own circles, or what are different. So the second one, anyone, what was this chart? Uh, col column chart. chart. Exactly. Um, does anyone know a different word for this? Column chart is actually one of the first times that I'm hearing this phrasing of it. It must bar, be bar chart. Bar chart. Bar chart. another more common bar chart. chart. What is a bar chart commonly used for? When do we see this kind of chart? You can Compar use to compare things. Mm -hmm. Comparing things? Comparing and comparing. When the you screen. are comparing uh, field, field data, field numbers, it's better use the, the bar chart. Yeah, so maybe we don't have percentages, we have exact numbers it's better to use. Mm -hmm. 
So we're using it for specific numbers, um, comparing uh, data. Exactly. And and a few numbers because if you have more numbers, uh, it's better for you use the line chart. It's yeah, exactly. depending on if it is a number that's increasing and decreasing over time, it's better to be mm -hmm. using the yeah. line chart. But if it's a singular number and mm -hmm. it's not really going to be changing mm -hmm. consistently, yeah. then we want to use the bar. How about this one? Pie chart. Pie chart. Pie chart. Pie chart. Pie chart. I use it here more to, to check the share, the market share. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. So we see this in the stocks quite a bit, along with line graphs as well. In Brazil, we call pizza chart. Pizza chart, really? It's, yeah. It's common to us. So we can see it maybe uh, for stocks. What, are, what is it usually measured by? Numbers or percentage? Percentage, exactly. High yes. percentage. What about this one? Low chart. The low chart. Low chart. Low chart, exactly. The sequence and of a process flows. Sequence, process, I heard both of those words. So yes, exactly. So starting at the beginning and how do we kind of come to the end? Um, sometimes with there being multiple options. Um, mm -hmm. It might be a how to do something. So it could be posted um, in a company, for example, right? It could be even mm -hmm. be posted um, as directions on something. This one? Organizational, organizational chart. Organizational chart. An organizational chart. And where would we see this one? To show the company, company, or company organization. Or Lots of people are talking at once, which is great because you all have answers. So maybe let's try some hand raising. <laughs> <laughs> On the top, um, you have the CEO. Yes. Under, it has the vice presidents. Under you have the, the directors, managers. Yeah. So this would be like VP, vice okay. president. Maybe there would only be one, not commercial VP. Right? And then no, but you can have more uh, operational VP, financial VP. Yeah. Do something like that. So in businesses, we see this a lot. Um, but what comes to mind first for me is actually like a family tree, we'll call it. Yes. Like that. So we have like, the, usually it would start with two, of course, there needs to be two people to have a children or a child. Um, so we'd have like mother, grandfather, yeah. husband, mm -hmm. husband, all of those branches. This one, our last but not least. Line chart. Line chart. Line chart. Line chart. Right. And where do we see this? I guess we've said a few weeks. Oh, tendency. It's yeah, easy to show the, the time. time. Over time, um, yeah. this would be changing, right? So we might have over a year, numbers over a year um, or over a month, right? depending on. Um, so some countries are using line charts to show COVID-19 cases, um, kind of from mm -hmm. beginning in March when or April, depending on when and where you are living. Um, and it's ongoing, of course. So the line shows this point. Um, so we're going to do a little listening next. It's a short listening. We'll listen to it twice, okay? So the first time is maybe get an understanding of what exactly it is that you need to be doing. So you can just put the number one, two, three, four, five, six um, next to the phrase here. Mm -hmm. Best to do that. Task B. One. As you can see on this pie chart. Two. The chart only includes data from 2018, not. Three. As you can see on the upper left. Four. The responses are from 500 first year university students. Five, of course, this small sample can't predict anything. Six, of course, you can see that there are three types of products. Okay, um, so that's just to give you an idea of what we will be matching. I don't expect that you have that done now, but it's great if you have a couple down. Okay. 
So it's telling us something and what is the purpose of that statement? What is it getting us to do? Okay, so after this listening, I'm going to pause it in between every one. We'll do the first two together and then hopefully you'll, you'll catch on and be able to do the others, okay? One, as you can see on this pie chart, so we have, as you can see on this pie chart, um, so what is that getting us to do? A type of chart. It's a type of chart, okay? So first, you can put number one. And it also kind of matches with number three here as well, because for this one, it's telling us it's a pie chart. Okay, so number one, but also number three, the type of chart. Two, the chart only includes data from 2018, not the chart the only includes data the from source, 2018, the source of, not the, source of that. the limits, limits of the chart. It's the limits of the chart. So if something is limited, it's not showing or giving us all. Right? So the limits of the chart, number two. What chart could possibly be limited? It's only One. showing data from 2018. So? True. Not two. 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 Or two. six. Six. Right? Or, six. Yeah. or maybe even three. Maybe there are only yeah. two percentages of certain things. Right? So any kind of chart can really be limited. Right? Even with the family charts, maybe they're excluding some family members or one side of the family. Right? So any chart can have limitations. Mm -hmm. Three. As you can see on the upper left, as you can direct see, to to something on the chart. Yeah. So showing us to, or exactly where to look. Here, the upper left. I guess we would only really be looking at number six. Um, number four. I would say like four or five, right? Because or these five. are very mm -hmm. overwhelming. They're sharing yeah. a lot of different information, so directing our attention that mm -hmm. way. For these types of charts, we could. Um, focus more on color, right? Mm -hmm. So focus on the, or um, maybe the specific number, but these ones have a lot to look at. Four, the responses are from 500 first year university students. The source of Something that's the not on the, the chart. Source. Uh, the source the of the so where is the information coming from? It's coming from the answers of all those people. So uh -huh. that could really be most of these, especially number two and three and six. Right? Yeah. Um, so sharing the results of a survey were often shared as either a bar chart, a pie chart, or a line chart. Five. Of course, this small sample can't predict anything. Something that is so obvious. Uh, Something that is obvious, right? So he starts with the phrase, of course, right? So um, just making sure that we're clear about that. That could be anything, I think, here. Six. Of course, you can see that there are three types of products. That is not on the chart. Attention to something on the chart. Let me listen to that one again, actually. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can see that there are three types of products. This one, I think, also something that is obvious. Of course, we can see mm -hmm. that there's three types of products, right? So maybe with this one, right, we have three. Well, this one has four. This one, maybe. Mm -hmm. That one would be focused on three things. So these are some phrases, what you just heard there. This can be a way that we're talking about the data, the things that we see on the charts and graphs. And when we're discussing them, which is going to be our next step. Okay, so it just should be just a quick quiz. We're looking at the chart in the graph. And of course, the first time we look at it, we should be able to say what type of chart is it? What information is it sharing? Um, so those are separate questions you can think of. What type of chart is it? What information is it sharing? That's the first thing you should always be doing when you look at a chart or a graph. So after you consider that with your partner, um, just going through the quick multiple choice, we have some different kinds of charts and selecting what one um, 
is best. So they're just yeah. multiple choice. There's some true and false ones in there. Okay. But let's go over these ones together. Um, so what kind of chart was this one? Line chart. Line, line chart. Right? Showing us the temperature over one year in Jamaica. So what was the answer to number one? August. 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 I would say it's probably actually similar here um, in Halifax. That's usually our month of the highest temperatures. What about number two? February. 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 And of course, if you were confused, it was kind of annoying, but you need to count all of the January, February, March per block. And number three? It's false. It's false. It is the same as September and October, not June and July. Yeah. With C B B. C B B. The next one here. What type of chart was this one? The column bar, bar chart. Column, column, column chart. chart. Or you could also call it a bar chart, yes. Mm -hmm. So what is it mm -hmm. measuring here? The cars. The sales. Oh. Number of car sales. So I assume that this one would probably be, um, oh, this is August, yeah, in one month. Mm -hmm. August, Number August of cars sale. sold and the make of the car, the company. Yeah. So what one is the most popular? This one. Mm -hmm. A. Probably because they have a good mix of like um, cheaper but good quality cars as well as more expensive. So. You can always speculate, guess the reason why this is the data. Number five? Box one. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, to be honest. Does anyone know how to pronounce it? Peugeot. Peugeot. We are all saying something different. Is it German? I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to do some research. Peugeot is a French mark. Peugeot is a French mark for French. Peugeot. I probably want to pronounce more French than I do, but I don't. Number six? Jaguar. Jaguar. The lowest selling, of course. Um, This one, um, especially over the 150, you had to look very closely. So that one, ACC. ACC. And our last one that we did here, um, this one getting a bit more complex, looking at both a table, which mm -hmm. isn't in the book that we looked at, but it's another way to show and uh, show data, to show statistics mm -hmm. and information. So in the 24 hours, how are these 24 hours split up? This would be an interesting pie chart to make for yourself. <laughs> what about uh, number seven? <laughs> I think this would be very similar to my pie chart. Uh, maybe less. less sleeping time. <laughs> Eight? B. False. B. It's false. True. It's true. Actually false. True. No, true, true, true. true. Oh, true. Why is there a debate? No, if it's false. It's true. false. False. It's false. It's false. 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's the same, right? So if we read it, it's not that they spent more time. It's the same time. So it would be false because false. it's not more. Yeah. So you might have been thinking true because it is the same, 2.5 and 2.5. However, it's not more. So it's false. That's also false. That's also false. 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 That would also be false for me. And 10? Getting drafted. Getting drafted. That's a quick test, I guess. I guess this person doesn't shower. <laughs> well, I guess maybe that includes the getting dressed. Okay, so that one, of course, is A, B, B, B. Yeah. So again, if you wanted to go and and do some more. There's some great practice here, especially this is a very complex kind of Venn diagram. Um, complicated, but if you want to challenge yourself here, um, we have a more complex pie chart with some more details. Um, lots of different types here, another line chart. All of the answers are at the very bottom with 
a reason. I'm going to look at this part. So if you are first looking at this, the first thing you want to do is what type of chart or graph is it? So what type is this? It's a pie chart. Pie chart. Pie chart. It's a pie chart. Exactly. It's a chart. <laughs> or a piece of chart, yes. Yeah. Uh, what information is it giving? The using, That's the using the internet. internet. Using the internet and how is it being measured? I heard the word device. Uh, yes. So device. what device is being used? to use the internet. Uh, sometimes we have a very clear title on a chart or a graph. So it's uh, the measurement or the purpose of the chart or graph is very clear, but that's not always the case. And in some of the ones that you'll be looking at after the break, not all of them have titles. So you might have to look more at the description mm -hmm. around it to, to answer that question. And what, is it, what do you think is the most important information that we are getting from this chart here? And there can be more than one piece of important information, but just choosing, selecting one. Who do you think that is? Percentage? Person? No. No, percentage, no. It's the, the, the type of the device. But um, choosing one, like look at the highest number maybe, or the lowest number, or something that that's is very surprising to people you. People use internet more in the cell phones and the smartphone. than in other devices. Devices. Yeah, and we might even want to include the uh, specific number, the spe specific amount, right? Most people mm -hmm. access the internet. Oh. On a smartphone. Using a smartphone. Smartphone and on a laptop is quite the same. Mm. Yeah, they are very similar. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's not most people. What is it actually? What's thirty-three percent? More than a half. No, no, no. Un un -third. Oh, no third. A third. Un third. Un third. One third of people access the internet using a smartphone. Similarly. Mm -hmm. Literally on our laptop. Wow, I cannot spell today. Similarly, um, those who use the lept um, a laptop. Um, people also use a laptop. Yep. So this is really making two points. You only need to pull out one point, but where these ones were so close, you might want to include both. Um, you could even put something like um, looking at the lowest number. This one's other, which we're not really sure what that could be. So you might not want to include that as the most important point. No. Right? Um, but sometimes the lowest number is something that you can focus on. Okay? So when you're looking for specific information, trying to look for um, the highest number, the lowest number, or the most surprising maybe change or fluctuation, mm -hmm. we'll say. That's a good word, actually. Fluctuation, meaning a, a change in fluctuation. So we talked a little bit about the academic word list. That it's a list that was put together by a professor and then a group of people based in Australia. Uh, they analyzed many, many academic texts from textbooks and academic journals to find out which words are used most often, which ones are most useful for academic writing. And it's also important to uh, learn them in the way they go together, putting two words or three words together to make a collocation. Uh, what word goes together with cyclical? Cyclical unemployment. Um, right. So they have a good definition of that um, occurring in periods of predictable repeated increases and decreases and certain types of unemployment work that way. Theta, here's a word you've probably seen lots of times. What collocations did we find? Oh, employment of debt. Yes. Okay, so look at line 24. What problems arise in interpreting the unemployment data? So interpreting data 
is an important collocation. The last one. Data shows the official on uh, yeah, so we could use that. Also 2014. So giving a specific time, a year, a month. Yeah. That's a common collocation. Data singular or plural? Uh, sing singular. Plural. Okay, and what, so it is a plural. What's the singular form? It's still data, no? It's the same? No. No. We don't often use the singular form. Datum. But it's datum. Do you know any other words that end in A are plural? plural? Have a singular ending in U-M? Vacuum. One vacuum. Okay, I've never heard the plural uh, to <laughs> vacua. Mm -hmm. I guess it's possible. Mm -hmm. There's one that's very commonly used. Data. If we talk about newspapers, TV, internet, what are all those things? Media? On the internet, we often use social media. Media. Yeah. Media. Oh. media is plural. The singular media. is medium. So there are a few words like that in English. Uh, they come from Latin. If the price of something goes up, is that a fluctuation? Yes. No. No. Kind of, but we use fluctuations for things that go up and down um, a lot, not a, not a general trend in one direction. We use it for many changes in opposite directions. Policy. Kitty, did you have some collocations there? Uh, economic policy. Yes. Policy makers. Yes. Policy makers. Policy makers. Right. So policy makers, the people or organizations that make policy, uh, who are they? Who makes government economic government. policy? Government. Yep. Yeah, generally governments um, can also refer to uh, international organizations, like the World Trade Organization, but usually it means governments. Yeah, so a spectrum can be uh, a range of different colors, but we can also use it more generally, uh, a range of different uh, anything. So we could have a spectrum of intelligence. So it's almost like a, a spect, right? Uh, it's similar? Not an aspect. Uh, it's a range is the best synonym. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, take a look at number seven. Influence others to serve their own interests. So that's talking about uh, people manipulating people. What about a more general definition? For example, um, training robots to manipulate objects. So here we could have another synonym, which would be handle or handling something. What's the root of that word, manipulation? Many, many, too late, many. And if I just look at the first part of the word, man or many, that comes from the Latin word for hand. hand. Yeah. yeah. So to manipulate means literally to move something with your hands. Mm -hmm. And we also use it in this other way to influence mm -hmm. other people. Uh, so for pose number nine, we have a couple of different different definitions here to create a threat or problem. First, you are offer for yeah. attention. Right. So it's um, pose doesn't mean to create the problem, but to make someone see the problem so that they have to fix it. 
uh, we can pose as someone else to pretend to be someone else in order to trick other people. Yeah. Okay, number 12 is good. There's one little grammar mistake there. Is equipment countable or non-count? Non-count. Non-count, yeah. So we don't use the article with it. Equipment whose purpose is to detect changes in the environment. Good. Does it refer to only mechanical or electronic equipment? Or mm. can it also be a part of a human or an animal? Yeah. Yeah. Censorship. Yeah. 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 We usually use it. We usually use it for mechanical or electronic equipment. Um, if we're talking about our eyes or our ears, do we call them sensors? Yeah. No, uh, we call mm -hmm. them sensory organs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same meaning, but we usually use that word for, uh, for things that we make, electronic or mechanical equipment. Good, okay. 